Hi, Warriors. Good turnaround Tuesday. How's everyone doing? Hi, Mike, Glenn, AJ. We have the perfect person to answer a question that I bet I believe a lot of you are thinking. Hey, K Man, Sinatra, Paul. Okay. So, uh, good morning, K Man. Good morning, Dale. Good morning, everybody. Okay, you're the perfect person to ask this question. So, I saw, uh, what's his name? Jens Norberg hmm? on CNBC yesterday. And he was talking about how intervention's just a waste of money. That the last, he talked about how much they spent in 22. And are, isn't there such a thing as a successful intervention? I would, I'd call this pretty successful. And maybe they didn't lose money, came in. Is it possible they're shorts on their, you know, selling this up here that they actually, it was a profitable operation? Well, first of all, they will never lose money. Because in a way, no, but I, I, that's what I said when, when, when the first interventions occurred in 2022, I said, don't forget that for two or more decades, they have only been buying Dorian. So, um, okay. Uh, and, and if you so only lots of firepower, sorry, lots of firepower. Well, I, I would say so. They've, uh, they've, uh, gradually increased, uh, their, uh, their, their reserves. Um, it all really depends on how depleted the reserves will become. It's 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 a fact that um, if you intervene to buy dollar yen, you can you can say they just have to print yen and then they sell it and they buy dollar yen. And uh, if you sell dollar yen, you need to use your reserves. But they've got um, about one point two or one point three trillion dollars equivalent of reserves. That's um, uh, so what I'm, sixty I'm billion. About the amounts that they um, need to throw at uh, the dollar yen right now. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that whole operation back there was sixty billion. Yeah, well, no, well, perhaps in a, in a few rounds, even more. But um, yeah, it, it's I. Anyway, I wouldn't be worried too much that... about that unless they need to. Um, they need to continuously intervene um, if uh, if the dollar yen continues to go to go higher, yeah. But, um, yeah. because then they are going to get yen back that they probably don't really don't really want or need right now so um <clears throat> now it's, it, it's hard to call uh, to call whether something is uh, is uh, successful or not i mean in in the light of everything i say i'd call them like only half the success was was relatively immediate but now we are back to levels where we were before yeah right look at the rest of the currencies we are not too far away um, on the euro. Well, yeah, we are. We are. The, the yen is weaker, but um, so in 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 that respect, we could say that it has not been overly successful. But it has been successful in the in in the um, for a quarter. In the sense that it bought them time. It bought them one yeah. and a half year time. Okay. All right. So you know, I mean, I think that's conventional wisdom that they never work. And this had pretty good magnitude, even though it recovered everything. Yeah, uh, but you know what happened then, right? I mean, they had a bit of help with um, U.S. inflation coming down. Yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, they coordinate, don't you think, when they release well, they, news they, like well, that? We have to, we, for people who are new to the markets, they, the, those people talk um, very regularly between uh, the the big central banks for one and uh, the ministries of finance for two. Um, we have to know as well that, like for instance, if uh, MOF <clears throat> sorry decides to intervene on the dollar yen, the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. Fed will be made aware of it, and the ECB as well. Okay, I guess it's hard to be sure precious metals when Israel is <laughs> bombing embassies in uh, yeah. Damascus. So Iran reserves the right to retaliate. Yeah. And, and Netanyahu's only way to stay in office is to escalate the war. Um, anyway, that's a powder keg, don't you think? It's It's been the case for, for a long yeah. time now, but uh, it, it doesn't look like uh, things are uh, evolving the right way. Yeah. Yeah, so um, 
anyway, so Gold did this throw over, right? Yeah. And during the day, it was back underneath it. Here, let me show the day. See, so it was back underneath it. Now it's back into throw mm. over territory um, right here. The only bearish thing I could say about it, and, you know, it might be, it's a long day, is we did make marginal new highs here mm. to take out this high. Yeah, and I look I, at the glaring I, divergence between yeah. the two. It's it's pretty glaring. Barely Except, got back to yeah. 70. Yeah, I, I I think we have to um, uh, we, we can always wait, but 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 I think we have to still realize that we come out of the end of the first quarter, starting the first quarter right now. Europe is just coming online today uh, for to start the, the second quarter, so you we may see some flows coming back into the market. And there's this other interesting thing as well is that yesterday um, gold crapped the bet when Bitcoin was going up. And today, Bitcoin is going down, but gold is going up. I think there's quite a bit of balancing and rebalancing um, going on in the uh, um, more or less initiated uh, community, perhaps, there between yeah. gold and Bitcoin as well. Yeah, they're rotating, just like yeah. they do in equities from sector to sector. Exactly. And it's not the first time we've seen these, these kind of moves. But um, well, it's a, 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 So well, maybe it's a new correlation that once I start following, will fall apart. <laughs> it, it actually started. It actually started already in in parts last year. You know, last year okay. we already uh, started to speak about it. Second, I, yeah, I, I thought I thought it went with the uh, with gold. You know, they both went higher together. Yeah, but, but then you, mm, but then you have those days where they uh, where they rebalance from one into the other. Um, when Bitcoin yeah. was flying, gold was gold was. Um, um slower much slower to start yeah. to react and then when now, gold's going... not getting this, as many views as bitcoin <laughs> yeah you know what i mean yeah, i know what you mean <laughs> that's for the act you know whatever yeah. they're writing about if yeah wanna, that's a pretty big hit if you want to talk to the youngsters to uh, talk about Bit bitcoin huh? yeah i said i'm real vision that my dream entry was 40k 40k yeah hmm down here 44 something like that you know it almost feels like the, everything wants to everything could go down into next week um i i still let's hold well it you know here. dale dale take a look at you got bitcoin on your screen um draw an ascending trend line from um from about uh yeah you know, about halfway through your chart there and uh, you'll see we cracked that trend line today. So uh, go a little further. Okay. The next, the next. Um, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Whoop. Okay. Yeah. So cracked the, the uptrend. It was in. Yeah. It it looks like we're gonna we're gonna see sixty thousand. So you got to ask yourself, you know, if, if Bitcoin's gonna see fifty nine thousand, you know, is that gonna take risk down? Um, I mean, stocks are trading a little heavier this morning. So uh, yeah. as we approach 5,200, 5,200 is critical for the S&P. So. Yeah. So, yeah, it didn't close that great yesterday, did it? Nope. You know, uh, again, um, maybe, you know, what's happening in Damascus, the market could no longer, you know, whistle past the graveyard. We're starting to pay attention. Uh, you know, oil had I, a I, good day, you know. Yeah, I had uh, I had a lot of people. Um, I, was, I say a lot of people. Not I'm exaggerating. I had a couple of people come up to me yesterday and you know just make mention to me in person uh, about how what a screwed up world we live in. You know, uh, it's uh, and and uh, you know just with everything that the geopolitical stuff that's going on. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I I don't know. Maybe the market's finally taking attention, uh, taking notice, or maybe maybe they understand that uh, a big eclipse is coming. Right, Dale. Oh, they don't understand that. But they don't have to. They just uh, fall prey to the forces. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, so, yeah, Bitcoin, but, you know, it could just be an ABC back to here. Is this what you're talking about, Blake? Maybe a flip yeah. developing here. Yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, a, a retest of 59,000 seems very logical, especially when you're getting a failed breakout above the 70,000 level. Because the 70,000 level, remember, that's so... 
previous higher, 69 and change. So, you know, the failed breakout of Bitcoin's probably starting to concern get concern yeah. of some some of the some be, some people that are taking on uh that risk, maybe some of the institutional money. But that it doesn't mean that it's you know Bitcoin's done, you know, stick a fork in it. Yeah. But I, I do think that uh it it is you know pulling back and as a as a as a pullback you know it might affect risk a little bit yeah, um it could be very vulnerable yeah I yeah mean, the only bullish scenario i saw was uh you know nasdaq doesn't look like a uh, topping pattern as much as s p's but you know it's it, kind of rangy it looks like uh, it's out of it looks like it's out of breath that's that's what the Na it looks very tired to me what's going to rally the market now that's what you uh, ask yourself. I don't know, but but when you take um expectations, rate cut expectations um okay. for the yeah. June that were at a hundred percent that are now at what I don't yeah. uh K Man may know this fifty, sixty percent right now after yesterday's PMIs. Yeah, yeah they're coming down, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, down here yesterday on the show, we were talking about this that I said I have a vibe. And then I was on with Joseph, and I said, what's this candle about? And it was before the ISM. And then I uh, did a, a broadcast and said, you know, when we're here, that over 434, we get 465 in uh, the 10-year. So here's the daily. I, I told them, Blake, I thought you'd be proud of me that I'm not a believer in continuation head and shoulders bottoms, but I've seen them work before. And this is like, <laughs> look at you, this, look at you. This is like 30 bips. So 30 bips take you to 465. Yeah. I mean, Maybe well, that, 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 that yeah, is that a, might, that's yeah, an inverted head and shoulder pattern. Look, well, that's just a breakout yeah. right there. I mean, yeah. Hell, that, yeah. It you know, any which way you slice it. You can triangle. Uh, I mean, the dollar looks like it's going to continue. Um, the, the thing that saved the dollar, uh, overnight was the euro eurozone well a lot of a lot of pmis out of europe out of the uk um which is good i mean it's you know we we yesterday was showcasing the u.s exceptionalism if you will with the really strong ism manufacturing data then you know you would hope that that is this is more of a global you know resurrection of uh of of economic data versus just us so it's nice to see the eurozone pmis improved a little bit um or at least more than expectations was it were they were they above last month um no. it, they weren't the were they that's the thing there, there are shoots but we don't know whether the shoots are green or not yet there's um, maybe poopy shoots well you know the tlt the long bond looks like it's headed towards 90 um you know tried to turn good here tried to turn good here and uh need this about uh, 50 percent back so they better hold 89 or there's problems in bond land so uh, this week is a big week, the yeah. u.s exceptionalism what this week is a big week yeah. and this week is uh they say uh, that every week jobs no uh, it's jobs data week and uh yeah. as i said on the flow show as well this morning and i've said it yesterday i think here as well Powell told us that they are not only looking at inflation anymore, but they're looking at the dual mandate. So we have to look at it as well. So I think it's a important week. And as I said, if they if we get another beat on those uh, jobs data, then your uh, your yields are uh, going to spike and bonds probably uh, coming yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's see, a a one thing I will say. And I have some of these is that even when you have days when the metals come off, like yesterday, you have these small performers just acting like they, you know, no one believed it down here and no one's chasing, going to chase up here and everyone's waiting for a pullback. And I also think there could be one, but, uh, you know, I've also seen markets that never give you a chance to buy a pullback. Haven't you guys? You, you know yeah you miss, pull up the euro pull, pull up the euro swiss uh, over the last two months and that'll that's a great example of not yeah, being able to buy pullbacks for a pullback that never happens yep yeah so that's a real frustrating thing to go through as a trader who's gone through that so you know how you solve it you just put a small piece in and you'll you won't need as much uh, ulcer 
medicine. And diet. <laughs> Don't you think, Blake? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a, a good homeopathic cure? There you go. For, Just put on a crew. little bit and, and, and pray, right? You know, I mean, yeah. hey, well, that, that the, the momentum... The yeah, momentum yeah. trades are great, and especially when they they just get going, you know, just yeah, so you put just them on let and let them go. Right, yeah, yep. So, and you you hold with the mentality that you know there's a lot more in them instead of with the metal mentality that uh, I don't want to give up profits. You have to give up profits at times to make more profits. So you know, not every day it's going to go your way but you, you'll never be able to hold a swing trade if you can't sit through a day that's not in your narrative, right? I mean, it takes patience to do that. Yep. Ryan's one of the best. Uh, well, I've been kidding him. Uh, came in. I think that's a great line. You talk about Ryan's <laughs> trades, not being trades, but a lifestyle. Did I say that? that yeah, that's what he said. Oh, he said he's he said came in and says I treat my trades like they're my lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was great. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, so what should we be on the lookout for today, guys? Well, um, well, why don't why don't well, first of all, why don't I take over the screen a little bit and let's uh, let's take yeah. a look at some of these markets because I think there's some some big developments. And uh, I think we should really start and and came in. I'd love to get your opinions here. You know, the dollar index continues to rally and uh, you see the dollar, you know, just rallying against everything. Now, obviously, we found some support uh, with these PMIs, but, you know, we have jolts data coming in today and that's going to be like that. And we have a lot of Fed speak um, that's oh, coming up. Israel at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, so what, um, what are you how are you feeling about the dollar here? Because, you know, again, here's the euro. We have slipped to we, we hit new highs. Um, for the year in the dollar index we got the us dollar you know trade here's the euro trading down at the uh set, or the 88 percent retracement basically it's last line of defense from a fibonacci standpoint before we really start you know trading back towards 105 um sterling is still you know below channel support it broke down yesterday um aussie's barely holding 65 cents how do you feel about the dollar here do you do you, do you continue to buy dollars yeah, big uh, big week. I am. I've I've got a I've got a few. Um, yeah, I'm still feeling all feeling all right. Uh, big week kicking off today. I think uh, easing in with the jolts. The jolts. I had I had a look at it. I thought they were much more volatile than than they have been actually over the past month. So it could be like the case of easing into the to the um, labor market week. Um, no, I still think the dollar is uh, is is looking all right. Um, selectively, then against uh, well, against quite a few. Um, yeah, I'm still the same. You know, I mean, um, I prefer being short euro dollar than cable personally. But then, uh, forces to admit that that euro sterling, when it looks to come off a little bit, it just it gets attracted again to the eighty five and a half. So sterling and euro are just walking hand in hand. Um, yeah, it wasn't this something. Uh, looking at the euro sterling, this this to me was something. So you know, uh, let me let me I would draw this. This this to me mm -hmm. kind of got me, even though I didn't I didn't trade it. But mm -hmm. you know, when you see something and you're like, okay, well, there we go. You know, you you like in this this case, you know, I thought we get nice double bottom. Uh, we'd get this rally. Um, mm -hmm. We we got stopped up at the 200 DMA right here. And, you know, when we broke out here, I was thinking, okay, well, Euro Sterling is going to be trading way back up here mm. at some point. And, it, and no, it just actually just, no. you know, rolled over. And now, and when we dip back in here, I was like, okay, well, I guess we're going to test these lows again. That's but exactly, it, it's very sloppy, isn't it? That's exactly how uh, how this market is, is trading it. You trade the breakout, doesn't work. Uh, oh, then we go the other way around, doesn't work either. As a, and as a result, we're back at 85 and a half. I haven't been trading Euro Sterling for a while, and I'm more than happy not to uh, not to even think too much about it unless we break 84, 90 figure and, uh, or, or 86, you know. And uh, it's something that, that sometimes those markets, when they just walk together, you just leave them for what they are. Um, I'm I'm having a, a tough time being long euro sterling because the sterling interest rates are still higher, but then the market is now thinking that 
Bank of England could actually go before the Fed and the and the ECB with uh, cutting rates, and uh, but then the data are not really supportive of it apart from the inflation because the rest of PMIs are back above fifty in the UK. I I'm, I don't see too much of a reason to um, to to well, you, actually what we're go looking at is, is a doggy bottom. You see the two legs. Oh, his doggy bottom. head and his mm -hmm. nose. Yeah. The two legs are at eighty-five. Well, that and would be a very then, long then tail. If, if that's if this is a doggy right here, and yeah, this is the dog. doggy, then it's a doggy yeah. barf bottom. So that's no, it's you know, a doggy it's, bottom. Yeah, it's a hairball. Uh, it's a hairball lows. cat bottom. No, it's a cat that ate a hairball. Uh, at the bottom. He is, I think he's handsome after seeing the groomer. <laughs> so we got. <laughs> uh, I, I, hey, it the, looks all right. <laughs> Go it, ahead. It looks more like a sheep that uh, needs a good shearing. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe this well, needs you know, to be shaved off there. I, that was our imagination drill for today, mm, team. There we go. Um, Euro <laughs> Swiss, uh, nice rally off of uh, uh, off of support, off of channel support. So the Euro Swiss is looking constructive, but it's really the only Euro pair. I mean, you look at the Euro Aussie. We're in a nice little triangle here. Um, you know, just it, very very sloppy trading right now for the most part but i i do want to point out a couple of things that this is something that um ryan had talked about on uh on thursday or friday we were talking about end of month flows and uh the dollar max you know we broke down i guess that was thursday we broke I like down ryan's and then, lifestyle and then we we bounced back oh ryan's ryan's been he's been on family time for like the last like week or so but he and thank you came in for for stepping into the uh, flow show uh today yeah. anyway he you know we're we're trying to stabilize here in the dollar max um what do you think about this do you do you, do you buy dollar max down here especially with Me? risk looking a little wobbly no i'm still i'm still short euro mix and i i no I'm not buying Euro, Euro Max does look that's a bearish breakdown. That's um, that is a straight up bearish breakdown. I, I no. I, I think dollar max is, is very difficult to to judge here. Um because you have like on the one hand you have the dollar, and on the other hand you have the near uh, near shoring, French shoring, and uh the max still being eleven percent. I for me the dollar max, I'm leaving it alone. Um it's gonna take a, a serious round of risk off to turn it around and We've had a few of those, and then when you do that round of, of risk up and, and it bounces uh, a percent or so, then the, in the next three days you're back to where we were before. And I mean, yeah, it's like the VIX, only the VIX is putting in higher lows. Take a look yeah. at the VIX, uh, Blake. I, I, yeah, I will. Uh, I was going to look at uh, crude oil for uh, okay. for Paul, but let's yeah, let's pull up the VIX. Um, here's here's the VIX. I mean, it's I mean, trying. It has, I mean, we're trying to trying. get back into that channel. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we have made new historic lows, and we're still well above the December twenty twenty three lows. Historic lows and what? VIX. Well, I mean, recent lows. We haven't okay. made a new you, low. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. we haven't made a new low since uh, December of last year. And the market's made successive higher highs uh, since last year. Yeah, I mean, the VIX is obviously finding some some stability. I mean, we, I mean I'm mean, i surprised we're not, you know, you know a the, little bit a, lower. The, but... There's millions of amateurs, Blake, that have learned the game of selling volatility that they can never get hurt. So there's a lot of amateurish put writers out there. And you know that every once in a while in this business, um, what, especially when you're younger, still can happen. You get kicked in the teeth. And, uh, you know, being an option writer, I heard a guy say he was short uh, bond calls on the crash in 87. But then the bonds rallied big, um, flight to quality, used to work that way. And uh, he, he was picking up quarters off the sidewalk for cycle after cycle. Until that cement mixer came, you know, rolling down the street and he was in big deficit. So, yeah. you know, there are a lot of amateurs doing it now, selling volatility. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, real, real, oh, and there's, they have a reckoning there's, coming. There's, there's, there's a lot of traders that haven't seen, they haven't seen anything. Um, yeah, I mean, that's true. the three of us together have been playing, have been um, trading since, you know, the mid 90s and before. So, I, you know, 
we've we've gone through the the cycles of of some of the big cycles of these markets there's a lot of people yeah. a lot of people on wall street on the street on trade desks that have not that are decades younger than us um so they are we're, we're in for a we're in for a little bit of a reckoning i'm i'm assuming uh question was is oil breaking out yeah we are above channel resistance we're above this uh this 618 retracement i wouldn't be I would be a little careful chasing crude oil up here, especially uh, here. Let me let me pull up the 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 live chart here. Let me go over to commodities. Um, oops, give me bring that down. Um, I, I'd be a little careful, like trying to chase it up here. I, I, you know, we could get a throw over, and it's a big six one eight retracement. You know, very very overbought intraday. Um, you know, the the daily RSI still looks like we got some further to go i i wouldn't be short uh crude but i thought you know move above 80 and it's it's yeah. you know it's looking it's fairly firm this i have a feeling and i i know if you guys missed this from the week ahead video look at the thompson reuters commodity index you know yeah. we we're holding not even making it to a 38 percent retracement we're actually breaking out here with commodities moving higher, it's real. It's going to be really difficult for central banks to uh, to 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 get in a cut and cycle. And and that's that was the point I made on the week ahead video. And you can see that breakout happening. Crude, the Achilles heel of all central banks, um, is going to be energy, in my opinion. You know what was interesting about the interview with Joseph Wang yesterday? Hmm. that he's still expecting yields to trade up at the old high on the 10-year, 5%. And at the same time, he is expecting three cuts from the Fed. Well, I uh, I mean, may, maybe... Long, longer duration. Yeah. More may, I mean, the short end. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. I, I, I'm, anyway. I'm, I'm, I think it's up for debate. Um, yeah. Oh, and here's Bit Bitcoin. In case you guys didn't see Dale's chart a little bit earlier, this is a this is a big failure at the at these highs. You're going to get some of the you know institutional money is probably going to be a little bit nervous. We start getting below the 50 DMA, then we get below 59 thousand. Then you're going to see a little bit of a pullback, I would think. So, and and that's good. This will allow uh, you know people to reload. I mean, I'm gonna I'll probably end up buying some Bitcoin on a on a pullback if we can get a decent pullback here. Um, I feel like a little naked right now. I do. I do think Bitcoin's going a lot higher. It is one of those asset classes that's just it's being you know worked into the system. That's all it is. It's a Wall Street uh, money making tool now. It's you know I don't know if it's much adoption. more than that actually. What's that? Adoption. Yeah, it's adoption. It's a it's a, it's woven into the financial fabric of the of the markets now, and it's just, just another tool for be. Wall Street to sell. What's that? He took a lot of heat for a while, but Mark Yusko never changed his mind about it. No, a lot of these crypto people have not. I, I was uh, I was joking in the uh, I was joking in the chat room, you know, on on uh, on Trader Summit. We had Anthony, uh, what's his name, Pom Pompliano. Um, we've had him on, you know, the Trader Summit many a times, and guy was always always uh, in sweats and you know scruffy hair, and you see him on CNBC all polished up, nice, you know. It's like, yeah, you know, hey, you know, they're they're become, they're part of the Wall Street machine. I mean, they they just are. Um, we got about two minutes. Uh, I don't think we have data coming out. Not not on the on Nothing. the face show. Yeah. So uh, real quick, K man, not 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 ten things that you're looking at. One thing that you're looking at today. What's what's the one thing that has your attention today? Continuation in the Swiss pairs. Um, that's uh, the 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 major thing. Um, okay. Um, we started Q2 on a, on a well negative for the Swiss, but on positive note for all uh, all Swiss pairs. And um, uh, for as long as S and B is not going to fight it, I think there shouldn't be uh, too much fight from uh, our side either. Um, of course, positioning is one thing. Uh, people can uh, need to may have to to scale or, or manage their positions a little bit, but uh, for the time being, it's still uh, very uh, very negative for swiss positive for the rest of uh, the currencies versus swiss i'm hoping you are right i i'm i'm you know i'm sure been right you know, for swiss... been right for three months why would it change right now 
<laughs> yeah, I'm my I'm more concerned in uh, you know being short Euro Swiss from 170. That's where I'm I'm short at. I uh, I'm am concerned with this 200 DMA right here. That's the thing that has me a little like yeah. I'm not closing mine out. I'm just, I'm hoping you're right. It's just um I'm with you. Um, Dale, uh, I know you have yeah. an interview coming up. What's your one thing you're looking at today? I'm rooting for a gold top and uh, hundred and forty dollar break. Rooting for a gold top and a what break? $140 break down to about 2120 to 2090. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. We'll see it. We'll see if we can top here in uh, in gold. I think risk, we are at a double 20 bucks from here. It's it's a hundred and sixty one percent extension there. Hundred and sixty one percent extension of this. This is remember that move that happened in sun, on Sunday in yeah. Asia. That big I, spike above the highs, hundred and sixty one sixty five yields. It will succumb to that. All right, and, uh, and a one hundred six plus dollar. Gotcha. Well, I I think everybody should have Bitcoin on their radar. Um, I do think that stocks uh, at at you know fifty two hundred will be key. That's the S and P. Like yeah. it's where we start making lower lows if we get below there. But I I think if if we're going to be led down there, it's going to be because of crypto. So just uh. Not because of crypto. I but think crypto is going to help confirm it. But I think that's something that we should all be watching today. Um, Dale, I know you have an interview. For those of you that uh, those of you that are, you know, make sure you all stick around for for Dale's interview with with Harold Malmgren. He's uh, is he? Do you have him on right now, Dale? Um, I, let's see if uh, he'll accept my promotion or. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll I'll yes, go look for did. him. No, I got he, him. He's coming over. Okay, great. Yeah, hey, just make sure you guys are all around yeah. on Friday. Uh, it's obviously non-farm payroll. So we're going to be talking about, you know, NFP. We're going to do live analysis as we always do. But we have a big announcement for the Forex Analytics uh, community. That's all you guys and gals. But uh, something we, we're, we've we been working on um, that we'll be announcing on Friday. It's a big announcement. We've been looking forward to it. We've had to put it on pause for a couple of weeks as we uh, fixed up some of the technical uh, issues. But um uh, we are good to go. So we're going to see you guys and gals uh, all week, but make sure you're here on Friday uh, for the jobs report. All right, Dale, thank you for being here. K-Man, thanks for filling in for Ryan. Ryan should be back tomorrow. And nope. uh, we'll... um, Thursday, I think. Is it Thursday? Yeah. <laughs> what? You know, he gives me He's a hard time for taking it. a day off for Christmas. I take it. Why I did take... I model? Why did I take I Christmas Day career? off. He takes like four months off for Easter. I mean, come on. Uh, when he comes back, I'm going to harass him like it's nobody's business. So, yeah, K-Man, thank you care. for being a, a, a stand-up and being here. And, Dale, thanks for being my uh, Thanks for partner. letting Ryan take advantage of you, K-Man. Oh, my God. It's horrible. It's been uh, like that for years. Years. <laughs> years. I've been suffering. He owes you big time. Um, yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here. Make sure you stick around with Harold. I'm, I'm interested to see and or hear what he has to say about all of these uh, geopolitical risks that are surrounding us today, because uh, if, if there's someone that's going to be able to break it down for us, it's going to be Harold. So make sure you all stick around for that. And Dale, thank you for uh, for for uh, being here and interviewing such great people every day. Thanks, man. Hello, my friend, Harold. Welcome back to FACE. Can you unmute? No, I'm there you go. Hi, Harold. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot, I forgot to turn my light on. How you doing? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Pretty well. I have a lot of, a lot of thoughts. You lost but your voice? Of, um, uh, Do you want me to call, call you back? You want to come back in five minutes or so? Or um, are you good? I'm good. Okay. okay. Um, All right. So, so Joe Wang yesterday set the scene. Um, who, who set the scene? Uh, Israel bombing an, an embassy in Damascus? Joe Wang yesterday on your interview. Joseph Wang. Joseph Wang. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, no, yeah, he's very good. He's calling for um, rising interest yes. rates yeah. on the longer duration bonds. Yeah. Uh, I think 
that's an inevitable process. But we have to begin with what have we got now? We have rising fiscal deficits escalating month by month. Um, the size will come to a peak at the election, but after the election, you got a very interesting problem. On the one side, the momentum of the Biden stimulus. There's your breakout on the tenure that measures 465 to me, Harold. Yeah, well, the, the Biden stimulus and after the election, the people wins, it will continue for at least the year before there's any new action. So next year will be even bigger fiscal deficit. On the other hand, if um, Trump wins, he's calling for very early, deep tax cuts. What that means is the fiscal deficit will rise. It'll grow even yeah. higher. Hey, let, uh, me say, let me ask you something. Yeah. They both want to spend money, right? right? The only difference is Biden wants to get money to the lower class and tax the upper class. That's and right. the others want to take the money for you know, their own benefit, which is understandable. Yep. So isn't it the same? I mean, we're spending and it's just it's who just gets it? Gets it. Um, yeah, but the problem is the deficit itself is going to be really Supply. big. Yeah. Now, um, what the Fed undoubtedly is beginning to worry about is the interest on that debt. The, and I think they're dabbling with the idea of interest cost control, ICC. I um, and that would, would require lowering basic interest rates um, because they need to get them the cost of the lower, the shorter duration issues down, um, especially right now, the shorter duration is just piling up huge amounts. Um, now that, but let's project out um, this fiscal deficit growing and growing, by the way, not only because of domestic issues, but defense spending has to go more because okay. we are getting so in. I mean, really, is this news that we're that, we're yeah. going to continue to build upon our debt? Um, well, it's it's not really news between you and me, but it seems the market isn't understanding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, how come you and I? <laughs> <laughs> See the news before it happens, and the market never cares. Well, everybody's focused on tomorrow morning. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'm then, you know what, Harold? This action, you know, sometimes yeah. there are days, big days, that, you know, really tell you something. And the 10 year, I mean, technically, technically. was, uh, you know, playing around with 420, 420 yep. after this mm -hmm. run. And mm. yesterday I was on with um, Joseph, Joseph, and I, I, said, I said, "It was it did was, the ISM come out?" And it hadn't come out yet. And now we have a breakout over four thirty four in the ten year, and, and that measures up to about four six five up here. So you're, and he's looking for new, you know, for it to go to five again. Are you? Yeah, I'm. Um, not only to five, I'm looking to go to 5.5 at least. Okay, five and a half, make new highs and yields. Okay. Yeah. We're on our way now. Yes. So does that make you bull continue to be bullish a dollar? Yes. Very, okay. very. Uh, yeah, Doxy will get much stronger. So then you got the question what happens to Chinese currency first? Well, it I looks think. like it wants to make, uh, you know, uh, possibly take out this high here. Yeah, the Chinese currency will have to drift down. Okay. Um, 
but fairly soon. Not how about how about Japan? Or do you think BOJ? <laughs> I've heard. You know, let me ask you this: you've you've lived through many of these, and there are a lot of traders that love to fade interventions. Do you think right. that interventions at times um, work and are justified? Yeah, justified. Um, it, the the yen is such a big market, um, so they can play with interventions, but there's no way that they can do something that holds for any duration. Yeah, well, um, they, they had this was right here, Harold. This was intervention, and you're right. Um, they did have some uh, for about three quarters success, but. But it bought them a year and a half to be at the point they're here now again. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Like 160 yen? The yen just fall apart here? Uh, I think it will. And it will be guided by China. If China weakens, then, then yen if weakens. you're Japanese, you want to weaken also. Because okay. there's okay. direct so you think China's leading this yen situation right now. Yes. The weakness, the weakness in China. China. Yeah. Okay, so okay, China, so China again, again, we're back to that narrative that if they, when they were strong and we were weak in 08, they pulled us out of recession and yep. where we're at in financial market history now is that they're so weak they could pull us into recession. Um, maybe. Um the U.S. is really strong. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in that school where um, we, don't, we didn't have soft landing or hard landing. We had no landing. Yeah. And I, I think we continue now with all the stimulus. Um, to be, our market will remain strong. Um, you know, we might have some adjustments, but direction is up. And everybody else is going to suffer. Um, now, some people argue, well, if the, if the yields on the 10s and 30s get too high, uh, foreign demand is not going to be strong. But that's not true. Uh, all the investors worldwide need treasuries. And they need them not to save, but they need them used for collateral for their own borrowing. It's the collateral function that is the most important. Uh, okay. so foreign demand for treasury will continue very, very strong. Even so if the, let me ask you a question. Maybe you'll save me some heartache, okay? Mm -hmm. So I've been looking for one more decline in TLT. Mm -hmm. Okay, down to around this level, this technical formation down here around 90. Yeah. Tell me, tell me why. Tell me, give me a reason why that would be a good buy. Can you give me one? But no, the okay. I can't. Right. You don't think ninety is going to be the bottom here? Of the, that, this was the first part of a bond rally, and this is corrective, and there's going to be another one of these. Probably yes. Oh, you do think there will be? Okay. And What's going to be the catalyst? Is it going to be Fed easing? Is it yes. going to be? Is it going to be yeah, risk, off? risk off? No, it's Fed easing. Fed easing. Okay. All right. Cool. <clears throat> no, but you can swing around and look at the um, uh, what, what are the effects on commodities? Now, it, look, it looks like in this environment, gold has room to run up. For a while. But the regulators, if it gets too strong, the regulators will dive in and try to cut it. So they're going to try. You think they'll try and stop this rally in gold? If it goes very far, if it goes, you know, hundred, two hundred dollars up, yeah, that's that's fine. But it starts to, if it starts to run, then they'll they'll dive in and cut it. Um, now, with the individual currencies, someone on your show this morning asked about Mexican peso. Um, it remains strong if Biden wins, but if Trump wins, he's going to want to put a lid on everything from China 
coming into Mexico, uh, assembled there and coming into the U.S. So he, he will put a lid on, on that explosion of Chinese stuff. Okay. Uh, China is, uh, uh, you know, they you have know, plants they have... in Mexico too, like us. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're reshoring, many, they're offshoring. Many. And uh, Trump will, will, will put, his, put his boot on that and um, you know, with some heavy tariff. So you have to be careful in the election. Um, now, <clears throat> the other question mark is what happens with the Euro and the Eurozone? Um, you know, it, it, it's in deep trouble because both Germany and France, are, their economies are really um, seriously damaged. And the politics in, in, in both is moving towards the right. So there, there will be a period of fiscal discipline, but at a lower level, and the manufacturing for Germany is, is really falling apart. Um, the the business and smaller businesses will, will be damaged, not only the big three automakers. The, and the only German companies doing well are chemicals, and that's because they're moving their chemicals production to China. So it, yeah. it's pretty pretty bad outlook. And the, the politics among the countries is moving in the direction of uh, we have some useful euro features, but let's not let's not expand the euro anymore. Um, you know, it's the idea of consolidation in laws is dead. So why are you looking for under parity? You're you're a very yes. bearish euro. You're looking for under parity. Yes. Okay. You know, I could see a technical case, you know, 111 and a half and 107. We we'll take it back at least to 102 if we break down here. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to look to try and buy the euro in the mid 105s, mm -hmm. the low 105s. So, anyways, that's still plenty that's still of downside, down. isn't it? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, let me ask you, Harold, uh, what were your thoughts when you heard about Netanyahu uh, hitting, the, uh, hitting the embassy, the Iranian embassy in Damascus? Well, Iran is using proxies. Right. And, and I think Israel has come to the point where, all right, if you've got these um, proxies, the, uh, the revolutionary guards, they're ta the legitimate targets. Um, you can be sure that there is behind the scenes direct dialogue, Israel warning the um, Iranian government. I'm, I'm not sure how much control the Iranian government has over the Revolutionary Guards. Um, are, are they going, they say they reserve the right to retaliate, will they? Um, we're probably going to see a slowly building war, but Iran doesn't. Is this thing escalating in your view, Harold? Where are we going? It's I, your letter. I read your stuff yeah. all the time. It's escalating, but it won't escalate into a massive war, it will escalate until there's pain on, on both sides and they'll work something out. Um, probably through the um, important media, which is Qatar, uh, where, you know, Hamas and Hezbollah leadership park themselves. Um, it, I mean, if it goes out of control, it makes no sense for anybody. But Israel has capacity 
to do extreme damage if, if Iran keeps poking. Uh, but that, in the near term, it will escalate. It will challenge the U.S. We, we get all those ships around there. I don't know why we put those ships there, but um, they're going to become uncomfortable sitting between um, two serious military operations. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, okay, so we don't have to worry. What about, do you think that we'll ever fund Ukraine again? Uh, big, big question. Uh, you know, I've been uh, writing... What happens if we don't, Harold? What, what, what the implications? Well, <clears throat> Russia will either quickly or gradually take control. And then they won't stop. Putin is really interested in uh, the Baltic states. Um, at, at least, um, He's like to own like them too, right? All right. Okay. okay. Um, I think I've lost you. Oh, I don't, I don't know why. Um, okay, you're back. Um, you may remember that I spent some time with Putin. Um, yeah, I know. Um, and um, that was before he became president. But yeah, yeah. at that time, um, I happened to know a lot about the uh, Baltic states. And he said, you know, when he grew up, he was always over there hunting and fishing. And the border was warm, and he really, really wanted to have it back. Um, I think that's been on his mind all this time. Um, he just so, wants to go fishing. Yeah, well, he wants he wants that neighborhood his. What what a great guy! All he wants, if he has to kill millions of people, on, so he could have a nice fishing trip, um, right? You know, what what's the difference? No, no. How to understand his mind? He, he, um, How do people like this end up being powerful people? It's amazing. Um, there's no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> but there he is. I mean, How do you I, think it's a machine? Okay, here's really the key question of the day for you, Harold. No. Do you think it's a Meshuggah world? Uh, now you're using a Jewish term that I don't know. <laughs> it means crazy. Okay, uh, you know, anyway, do you think it's crazy out there? More than you've ever seen in your whole lifetime? Yes. Um, at, at the top levels in the U.S., France, Germany, U.K., um, the People big are countries. worried, aren't they? They're very worried, and the leadership is collapsing. I mean, the conservatives will, will get thrown out in coming months, and the um, Labour will come in, and the UK will go into a, a, a real crisis. Um, France and Germany, the present leadership is, is weak, without power. I mean, so yeah, it's going to be crazy because there's no nobody at the tiller in the ship, on this uh, boat. Yeah, Rod and Serling that, couldn't have written this, right? No, thing to remember is that with Biden, his team are um, they they fix problem one time one at a time, but there's no strategy, there's no overarching concept of what they're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no, if Trump comes in, to bring in a whole lot, a lot of other people, but a new administration it takes about two years to, yeah. for That's everybody time, to find out where, you know, where they, yeah. where they need to sit and who's in charge of what. I've been through, you know, every administration change from Kennedy all the way to now. And I understand the process uh, is very, very slow. 
So that's when one of the most vulnerable is after a change of presidents. Yes. Not, yes. Okay. And that's uh, if we know that, our adversaries know that. Yes. So uh, then, if anything's going to happen, they're going to, they're not going to do and Nothing's going to happen big before the election. It would most likely, most likely happen, happen after. Yes. 2025 would be a, a very busy and unhappy situation internationally. Where uh, should we go to, you know, ride it out? <laughs> well, if you're very rich, you find a place in New Zealand. New Zealand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's the only place. Huh? How about Scotland? Um, well, it's part of the UK, but but it is higher land, so if, um, if the Russians do something bad with the UK, it'll be the lowlands around oh, the gosh. So I guess... And, anyway, uh, Harold, you know, you know what I love about your writings? I get more nervous when I'm interviewing you than when I read your writings, okay? <laughs> because when I read it, it's so rational, and uh, it you know all the pieces come together for me. It's it's rational, so you're not as emotional as you are when you're talking yeah. about these kind of events but when it's on paper. It's so kind of the, the um, you know these dailies that we turn out. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are subscribing, but what's interesting is some of the most thoughtful people um, are really calling us about every day, you know, because we cover everything. Um, and and on, on trading, um, you know, we started, Nick and I started with just research as a research provider. But now, uh, because we, during the last year, we did reveal positions that we were taking. Um, now we have one London and one New York major hedge funds allocating capital to us. So now we are trading as portfolio managers for others, but and they're not, not in a small scale, on a very big scale. It's yeah. interesting because they are following, you know, these dailies and they see the reasoning the opportunities and nick my partner you know he's he, he's in brazil but he he's british he he used to be a big money maker for Brevin howard and uh, so you know this keen interest with some of the bigger head funds and what we, we're doing so we're we're having fun yeah, that's important, and you're being validated for it. Uh, Nick is a prolific writer to put out all that stuff every day. He, he is, uh, yeah, he is astonishingly um, able. You know, he writes and he writes well. I mean, all reader. right. So, best way, best way for people to, to subscribe, or uh, is there a website I should go to, or do you want to um, show it? Well, on Twitter and LinkedIn, we, we um, repost. Okay. In the repost, it has a way to subscribe. Repost um, in your stream or a separate stream? Um, in either Nick, Nick reposts or I, or I repost. But okay. One or All the right, other. so people could reach out to you. You'll take uh, DMs. If people reach out to you. Yes. All right. So uh, reach out to Harold on X at Hales Rethink, H A L S Rethink. Yep. And uh, Hale, will, Hale will take care of you. And uh, it'll be an honor for you. Eventually, we're getting so busy, you will do my website. But... All right. Well, you'll have to hire some help. Okay. Yep. You know, yep. you and Nick need to have some. Uh, yeah, we're, we, we're aware of that. All right. Uh, <laughs> so we're looking at... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you, man. <laughs> anyway, Harold, uh, great to talk to you, and uh, you are a bond bear. There's It's a one-way street. Yeah, man. Higher, high, new highs and 10-year yields, bond bear, Harold Malgram. 10s and 30s, and not all of that whole range of... 
All right. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Okay. I'm sorry I have a little bit of trouble with speaking. I'm it's okay. You know, uh, Harold, I uh, want to thank you. I want to <laughs> thank you for coming in and teaching and edifying our community. <clears throat> Tomorrow I have sur oh. surgery um, okay. plowing into my throat. And right yeah. now my, my speech is somewhat okay. better. But All right. It'll be better uh, when I talk to you in three months. Yes. Okay, Harold. <laughs> take it easy, my friend. Okay, you too. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.